So last time we got most of the way through 5.2, we're going to finish it off. So we talked about angle bisectors, we talked about how that would be on the perpendicular distance away from it, and that would be equal to distance, okay? And I want to talk about the perpendicular distance, distance real quick in another way, a more tangible way, I feel, okay? So, um, so okay, if I were to go over this wall, yeah. my closest distance to that wall is it going to be going this direction? No. Is it going to be going this direction? Yes. Closer, but can I still get a little bit closer there? How? By walking, walking straight to it, okay? And what kind of angle do I form with this wall that I walk straight to it? A 90 degree angle. I mean, not when you do it like that. Okay, so that's the same thing here as why we measure the distance at a 90 degree angle, because it's always the closest distance. That's why we do a 90 degree angle, because the 90 degree angle will always be that closest distance. Okay? It will always be that closest distance because it's going to be at that 90 degree angle. So that's why we do it that way. We do the angle bisector and the angle perpendicular distance that way. And then we went through these, and then we stopped right here. Or we skipped over this part. We're going to come we're gonna come back to it today. And hey, look, today we're coming back to it today. We're actually going to be working. But we had that nice weekend in the middle, and that was very litty, as we used to say. Yeah, how was how, how your second weekend going to be? Oh, my second weekend? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a good second weekend. It's almost going to be as good as like second breakfast or second dinner. You know, lunch, dinner, activity. Yeah, it's just there. Yeah, it's just there. Okay. Hey, so are these three going to be the same toys? Are these toys? Hey, so are these toys? Are these toys? Yes. No. They're sharp pointy objects. No, they're sharp pointy objects. Those there. Actually, would you yeah. have one of those each person? Don't, don't the line. Noah. Okay, not toys. Do not act like they are toys. You are a toy. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Intersects both sides of the angle. Okay, the vertex of an angle. You want to make a small arc that intersects both sides of that angle. 
Um, yeah, I mean, don't want to make it like minuscule. Wasn't that word you just used? Minuscule. It was made up again. Is it like that, that good enough? You've never heard yes. that word before? intersections from those arcs. So what we do, and I'll do this in a different color, is we'll draw a line through those. I never thought of this. Oh, you did it? Um, I saw it. Right. Right. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake. I can't even walk it. Thanks for ruling. Okay, so notice what did I construct in the red here? A line. What kind? It's a line. And what does this line do? Oh, it bisects. It bisects what? The arcs. The arcs? But more importantly, it bisects the, you said it, Haley? The angle. Hey, look, bisecting an angle. It bisects this angle here. It didn't bisect my angle. You did it wrong. I did exactly. Oh, it looks like a what? It looks just like 
did a, a exactly the Mine doesn't go in the middle. Mine doesn't go in the middle either. <laughs> Mine's like over here. I'm looking for you. I think he's like a kid. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. Okay. Hey, question on this one that I haven't already addressed. Did you get them? What am I yeah, but Big I want to Honor it. Thank you. We have rules. We are civilized society here. I don't know if savages. Democracy. Okay. So, moving on. Just like we did it here and we did it with one. Remember what we did when we did the one perpendicular by the number of on? We did it with a triangle, right? Okay, and the triangle had three sides, we did it three different times. We constructed three perpendicular bisectors. How many angle bisectors do you think we're going to construct on a triangle? How many angles are there? Three. So we're going to bisect all three of them. This sounds terrible. Okay. So what we're going to do is you put, put your compass, put your compass on one of the vertices. Along the vertices, so you pick a vertices, pick a vertex on it, pick a vertex, one of the vertices, and put your compass on it, and then draw an arc that we think is big, as, and as long as it intersects the two sides of the angle, we're good. We're good. Like, <laughs> a bunch of mind games in this game. Is it one of those? She said it can be me. Is it true? So when let's continue. Somebody says one word and then everybody responds. Hey, I mean, this is communism. It said two words, actually. Two words. intersections of the side and the arc you made. And you'll take an angle and you got to keep this angle to the next one as well. And you intersect it. And draw an arc like that. Oops, I got off the rails. What? What are you going to do there? So you draw an arc from that intersection. And you go on the other intersection and you do it the same measure. It has to be inside the angle. Your new arc has to be inside the angle. Outside the angle, you gotta you gotta redo it. Um, that'll work. Okay. So then you go through and you make this um, the other one on the other side using the same measurement. Going on the same measurement.
So I went through and made the first one, and then we need to do this for the next angle as well. So we'll go up here, and it's okay if your measurements are different than your last angle. That's fine. It's not a concern to us. You need to stay the same for this angle, though. So you go to the, this new vertex, you make it something that intersects both sides of that angle. We need to, we need to have the same angle to keep track of. No. You go to a new angle, and you can use new measurements. You restart the process, you can use new measurements. Okay, so make something that intersects both of these sides. Because this is a bigger angle, so you might need a, uh, a larger setting to hit both of the sides of all. You might not. I don't know. Depends on what you did in the first one. And then you go to the second one, and you have to make sure it's a setting that's going to go over halfway through the angle. Make sure when you do your uh, angle bisectors, make sure when you do your angle bisectors that you extend the line quite a bit. Hey, notice how all of my 
Are concurrent, aren't they? What's concurrent mean? They meet at the same point. There's a point of concurrency here. Concurrency here. This point of concurrency in this one is called the in center. So we have the circuit center formed by the three perpendicular bisectors. Here we have the in center. And this in center is inside the triangle right now. Our circuit center last time was outside because it's an obtuse. This is an obtuse triangle, but it's inside. So what we're going to do is say, hey, remember we talked about this idea of an in-center? Yeah. We got through this, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We talked about uh, okay. uh, that way. All right, let's see. Right. We're on the bottom of the circle. The in-center, we did this? Yeah. The in-center can never be outside the triangle. Okay. So then here we have the right. radius. The radius of a circle is the distance from a center to any side of the triangle. So normally a radius of a circle would be the distance from a center of the circle to any point on the circle. So any point on the circle now, well, points on the circle include the sides of the triangle. And it's that perpendicular at short distances. So here, it's going to be equal distance to those sides. So PE is the same measure as the measure of PF, which is the same measure as PD. Did we already do example 11 and 12 on the next page? No, we didn't. We didn't? Oh, I don't know. Just like oh. right now. <laughs> oh, oh well, course, man, we are SWBA. I mean, it's we can go attitude. over it, and then you can give that to us. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to pass it out, because I think you guys can handle it. Thank you, yes. Thank you. 